Hello and welcome. Sometimes in the early 90s, I came across this toy steam engine that generated electricity from burning propane or charcoal briquette. I thought it was pretty cool and I began to wonder, what if we made this a bit bigger, add a bunch of sensors and valves and pumps, and instead of letting the steam out into the air, we could condense it back into the boiler. What I just described is basically how every thermal power plant works. The source of heat can be anything coal, natural gas, uranium, even burning garbage can work. Just as long as it is capable of boiling water and generate steam at a rate high enough to spin a turbine. Now anybody can just boil some water and push steam in pipes, but the real challenge I think reside in the ability to maintain a stable equilibrium between all of the factors involved in the transfer of heat and doing it safely. Returning the condensed steam to a pressurized vessel while maintaining the steam output to an optimum value requires monitoring flow, pressure, liquid level, and of course, temperature, in many parts of the uh, path taken by the fluid. This means a control center or a control room of some sort. So I built one. My design consists of a boiler sitting in a furnace where the level of water can be monitored along with the pressure and temperature inside the boiler and outside in the furnace area. The steam produced is then carried over to the turbine followed by a tube condenser and the condensed steam now back into a liquid phase is then accumulating in the condensate tank where the level, temperature and conductivity are being monitored. More on that later. Then a pump can move the water either back to the boiler or through a set of filters and ion exchange resin loop and back to the condenser tank. The temperature is again checked along with the pump pressure and flow. A set of solenoid valve allows for the water to be directed in either direction. Finally, I installed this drain valve to empty out the system easily. The secondary loop is much simpler with a pump, a flow meter and two thermometer. It is being cooled by air in its cooling tower. The furnace was made from this old helium tank. I cut it open to accommodate this boiler. I then welded a steel cover with a hole for the smokestack and a door to fit in the fuel. The boiler is a stainless steel compressed air tank with five NPT ports. The condenser, also stainless, is a tube type swimming pool heat exchanger. All the piping, elbows, connectors and fittings were easily found at my local hardware store and range from a quarter to about an inch in diameter. For some reason, 3 8 is getting difficult to find and is being phased out. So if you want to build your own, choose a different size. Most of the sensor except 12 volt DC and came mostly from the uh, automotive industry. The pressure transducers are oil pressure sensor, so they are perfectly fine with hot liquid under pressure. Same things for the furnace thermometer, which is really an exhaust thermometer. Both pumps and all the solenoid valve were found on eBay and run on 12 volt DC as well through 12 volt relays, also from the automotive world. All of the commands for the pumps and valves and all the analog data are connected to this fantastic module from Weeder Technology. I found this company out of Florida and its owner Terry is very helpful, ships fast and designed a free software ModCom which is extremely easy to set up, customize and use. I don't mind the Window 98 look although it could use some updating but uh, for free software with support it's difficult to compete. I like the customizable chart recorder and all the math function for each input data. I tried the LabVIEW and the National Instrument module and other LabJack, but I really like the uh, straightforward and easy concept Terry came up with. And for the price, you really can't beat that, especially for someone like me who finds computer coding as interesting as a tax form. I highly recommend you check it out if you are interested in a similar computer operated rig. The module connect directly to your computer through RS-232 and the USB. I have a 100 foot long cable from my garage to my control room PC. Now this is the basic uh, wiring diagram for some component. As you can see, there is quite a few wires and this can rapidly become a messy business. The cooling tower is made of chicken wire that I uh, later covered with fiberglass. I tried to recreate the iconic shape everyone is familiar with. Finally, I kept the boiler separated from everything else and its own drywall with uh, drywall, of course. 
I mentioned the conductivity detector and the filter daemon setup. Now why would I want to add complexity to an already complicated system? Two reasons. One, the piping and connectors are carbon steel. And if I want to run this plant for more than a few months, I need to feed it the cleanest water possible. And two, the boiler act like a continuous distillation column, so everything that is not water will accumulate in the boiler and eventually clog up something or keep water from going in with disastrous results. Before I uh, fire this thing up and share some of my early results, let me talk about safety. Heating water in a closed container is never a good idea. The power of steam has been known for a very long time. And since the early days of the Industrial Revolution, many boilers' explosions have occurred with serious damage, injury, and death. So I installed some safety features on my boiler. The release valve here is a normally open valve. So if I were to lose power for whatever reason, this valve will open and release all the pressure into the air. The careful observer will notice that this is the same valve that got stuck during the Three Mile Island accident. I do not plan to run this boiler over 20 or 30 psi, and the tank is rated for 200 psi. But if all else failed, I installed a second safety pressure release valve set to open at 100 psi. Finally, this blue tank right over everything is ready to dump 55 gallons of water on the boiler and in the furnace if needed. So if I get distracted or busy somewhere else, the whole thing would come to a cold shutdown mode. Long before getting to a dangerous point, and if I remain conscious, the program allow me to set up all kinds of visual and audio alerts and cues to direct my attention to a particular parameter. For example, if the pressure were to rise above a preset limit, this light will flash red and the speaker will play this sound. Warning. Warning. Or if the temperature was getting out of control, this would happen. Temperature. 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 Finally, I have the possibility to scram. Pressing this button will immediately release the steam through the exhaust valve. Pour water into the furnace, shut the feed water pump down, dump all the water out, and play this tune. Scram. Now it's time to fill up the condensate tank with about 5 gallons of distilled water, taking note of the conductivity in the process. I also keep a virtual eye on leaks and potential problems with this wireless camera. The startup is just as easy as a summer cookout and requires no skills. When the water gets hot enough, I just close the pressure release valve and watch the pressure go up. Keep an eye on the furnace temperature right here. Then I just open the steam release valve to the turbine and the condenser. If you pay very close attention here, you'll notice that there is no turbine. I have been looking for steam engines and all I could find was either too small, way too big, or far too expensive. I've looked at centrifugal pump, blower fans, air compressors, but so far, no deal. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any suggestions. I'll be interested to read your ideas. I spend a lot of time, sweat, and blood on this project, but it's so much fun, it should be illegal. <coughs> There's still a few problems to figure out, like the uh, liquid level in the boiler, for example, but I'll post a part two when I find a turbine and generate my first watt. I'll leave you with the incredible sound of steam release. Damn it!